The BCL2 superfamily in mammals has three subgroups. The proapoptotic BHC-only proteins, also referred to as the sensors. The anti-apoptotic BCL2-like proteins, also referred to as the guardians. And the proapoptotic backslide proteins, also referred to as the effectors. The sensors induce apoptosis by binding to and negatively regulating the guardians, thereby blocking the ability of the guardians to inhibit the effectors. Some sensors can also induce apoptosis by directly binding to and activating the effectors. Once active, the effectors induce the processes necessary to irreversibly commit a cell to the apoptotic fate. Set 9 encodes the C. elegans homologue of BCL2, one of the guardians. And EGO1 encodes the C. elegans BH3 only protein, one of the sensors. Like the BCL2 protein, the Set 9 protein has a hydrophobic tail, to which it is associated with mitochondria. Furthermore, the Set 9 protein interacts with the EGO1 protein, and this interaction inhibits Set 9 function. This notion is supported by the following finding. The Set9 gain of function mutation N1950, which causes a general block in apoptosis, is a missense mutation that changes a single amino acid in the Set9 protein sequence. Specifically, it is a glycine to glutamate substitution at position 169 of the Set9 sequence. This amino acid is within a conserved region of the Set9 protein that is referred to as the receptor domain of the guardians. Based on studies performed with the mammalian guardians, this domain is important for the ability of the guardians to bind to the sensors. And indeed, the N1950 mutation affects the interaction between Set9 and EGO1, the sensor. It reduces the strength of the interaction several fold when analyzed in vitro, and it might completely abolish it in vivo in the worm. This suggests that a mutant Set9 protein that can only weakly bind to EGO1 or that can no longer bind to EGO1 escapes the negative control that the sensor EGO1 normally exerts on it, thereby rendering it into a constitutively active protein. Apart from Set9 and EGO1, are there additional members of the BCL2 superfamily encoded in the C. elegans genome? There's one more BH3-only protein called Set13, but it does not appear to play a role in apoptosis during development. However, it turns out that there are no additional guardians and there also does not appear to be an effector. So in C. elegans, the BCL2 superfamily shows much less redundancy. And this is one of the reasons why it was possible to identify members of the superfamily in C. elegans using forward genetic screens. But why is there no effector in C. elegans? Once activated by the sensors, either indirectly or directly, mammalian effectors induce the processes that are necessary to commit cells to the apoptotic fate. How can these critical processes be induced in C. elegans if there are no effectors? Set 9 might actually not only be a guardian, but in certain contexts, also an effector. In 1994, Michael Hengartner and Bob Horwitz published another paper in the journal Nature, in which they reported the identification of the N1950 gain of function mutation. In their publication, they also present data that Set9 might have pro apoptotic activity in cells that are programmed to die. Basically, in those 131 cells that are programmed to die during C. elegans development. What was that data? Remember the pharynx assay that I talked about in one of the last sections? This is an assay that allows one to detect and also quantify a general defect in apoptosis. 
Animals homozygous for strong loss of function mutations of, for example, the Z3 gene, have on average 12 extra cells in the anterior pharynx. At the time Z9 was cloned, a lot of additional Z3 loss of function mutations had been identified in various screens. Among them also weak loss of function mutations, such as N2427. In the pharynx assay, N2427 only causes on average 2.8 extra cells. However, N2427 suppresses apoptosis in Z9 loss of function mutants enough to cause these animals, which would normally die, instead to survive. Interestingly, in these rescued Z9 loss of function Z3 N2427 double mutant animals, there are on average 8.6 extra cells in the anterior pharynx. Think about that. During the development of the anterior pharynx, 16 cells are eliminated by apoptosis. In animals that carry the weak Z3 loss of function mutation N2427, 2.8 of those, not quite 20%, fail to die. By introducing a Z9 loss of function mutation into the N2427 strain, you are now taking out the gene that normally protects cells from apoptosis. What would you expect to happen? You probably would expect that more cells die. The number of extra undead cells should go down, maybe to zero. But that's not what's happening. The number actually goes up significantly. The number increases threefold from 2.8 to 8.6. One model that could explain this is that in those 131 cells that are programmed to undergo apoptosis during development, Z9 actually acquires a function that is necessary for the death of these cells. In that case, removing Z9 function in the N2427 background should result in even fewer cells dying and therefore more extra cells. And that's what was observed. How could Z9 acquire a pro-apoptotic function in those 131 cells that are programmed to die? What makes them different from the 959 cells that are programmed to survive and in which the Z9 gene is clearly necessary for survival? As we will see later, it is the activity of the Ega1 gene, which is different. We speculate that the binding of the Ega1 protein, a sensor to the Z9 protein, a guardian, not only blocks the anti-apoptotic function of Z9, but turns it into an effector-like protein with pro-apoptotic activity.